Neediness will make you invisible to the people that you want to like you, especially your ex. And what I see a lot of the time is people do this in a passive way once they've learned that the direct route, you know, begging, pleading, blowing up their phone doesn't work. So then they go for the passive way and posting passive aggressive comments on social media or trying to get a message to them through a friend of a friend or through a friend of the family to let them know how great you are doing. This will have the opposite effect to what you want it to. So today I'm going to get into what is the biggest mistake you can do when it comes to neediness and trying to attract your ex back that will actually push your ex further away. But before I get into that, welcome back to The Love Fix. It's Nick, as always, doing my best to get you through your breakups as easily and as healthily as possible. There are two links I want you to check out. Go to my About tab. There's a coaching link. If you want to book a one-to-one session with me to get you through your breakup, hit that, book the session. If you want to come and join my free Facebook community that's got over 3,000 people on it now, I'd love to have you there. And everybody's just helping each other out. If that fails, go to Facebook, type in the Love Fix Breakup Recovery. Alternatively, you can email me at you can email me at thelovefix20 at gmail.com. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. The first chapter in Mark Manson's book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, is called Don't Try. And that applies to your situation right now. Don't try to get your ex back don't try to show them what you're doing or how great you're doing and or how much you you are leveling up even if you're doing it in a passive way this is neediness this is trying to prove something to your ex this is validating their decision that they were right to leave and if you do have any ambitions of attracting your ex back you don't want to be doing that and if you have well, I would hope you have ambitions of leveling yourself up and getting through this. You also want to not be needy. And to take another quote from Mark Manson, be non-needy. Let's call it non, non-neediness, non to quote Mark Manson. So what is non-neediness? Well, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It's been more focused on you than your ex or anybody else around you the more you try to prove yourself to someone the more you try to prove yourself that you're good and you you will fit in the more needy you become and guys you might be acting non-needy but if you are trying to suppress neediness it will it will leak out of you you're your need, your neediness, your need to be liked will leak out of you. And it's just not attractive. And I'm sure you've been in situations where you're at work, you're at school, you're in the gym, you're in a bar, you're around friends, and you've always got that one person in the group trying to prove themselves to the group. And all they do is have the opposite effect in fact they become the laughing stock of the group and everyone starts taking the piss out of them and on a romantic level all this will do for your ex is to make you even more unattractive and whatever thoughts they may have had to reconsider your breakup to reconsider a, a, a reconciliation with you will very very quickly go out of the window they will dry up quicker than a cactus in a desert i'm not even too sure if that analogy makes sense the cactuses dry up very quickly anyway you get what i mean don't make fun of that analogy I, that, that shit but when it comes down to getting someone's attention in any walk of life remove your attention remove it completely you go about your day you invest in you, you invest in doing good work and just trying to be the best you can be. Now, I'll give you some advice that my dad gave me when I was very young. I started working 
and I started working for my dad, ironically enough. And I was bitching about something, like because he was a you know operations manager at the time, managing a, a warehouse, and I had some part-time work with him, moving boxes around. And I told him how shit that was. And he said to me, son, no matter what job you got, it doesn't matter if it's the shittest job in the world, do it to the best of your ability. Do it for you. Do it because you want to be the best at that and someone will notice you eventually. Don't bitch. Don't complain. Have less opinions about the, the, about the matter and get on with it. And even though at the time I did not fully understand that advice and I thought my dad was talking shit, it was the best advice he ever gave me because it worked out for me. And I try to apply that in my everyday life now. If I think something shit, I try not to complain about it. I try to do it to the best of my ability. There are things about creating content on YouTube that are horribly repetitive and they are shit. And I just, okay, it's got to be done. I will do it to the best of my ability and hopefully someone will notice. Now, if you want your ex to notice you, vanish. Do the opposite. Do the exact opposite. The obstacle for you right now is that your ex does not want to be with you. That's the obstacle. The opportunity in that obstacle is that you can now say yes because your ex said no. You can say yes to other things because your ex said no. You can now invest 100% in yourself. And that is what is attractive. That is what's sexy. That is what's needy. And if they do decide to come back, if they do decide to reach out, it has to be on their terms. It has to be because they've made that decision. They made the decision to walk out. They have to make the decision to come back. And when they do come back, who will they find? Will they find the needy, whiny, bitchy person that didn't listen, the person that they dumped that didn't take care of themselves, or will they find the more confident, upgraded, leveled up version of yourself, someone that is doing the therapy, someone that is doing the coaching, someone that has smarted themselves up if that's what you need to do, someone that's started, gone back into education, developing yourself, who are they going to find? And it's much more important, it's much more impressive if they discover that on your on their own. And I'll give you a good example. When I meet new people in real life, I don't really tell them what I do on YouTube. They ask me what I do and I say, right, okay, this is what I do during the day. And that's kind of it. And I try to let them discover on their own what I do on YouTube, what I do outside of that. Also, my other hobbies like drumming for example and it's always a key talking point and that makes that makes me and it will make you far more attractive and less needy because you're not trying to say look at me look at me look at me if you're reaching out to your ex if you're stalking their social media if you are making passive aggressive posts or trying to make it look like that everything's okay on so social media you must stop it will have the opposite effect no one gives a fuck No one cares what you're doing on social media. No one. And I'll give you a good example. I came off of my personal social media for five months. Now, I I, I frequent the Facebook group, but I use a different profile for that. I came off my personal social media for five months. Didn't post a single thing on Facebook for five months. Not a dot. And I checked it last week. I made my first post in five months. Not one person outside of my immediate friends group, the people that have my number and I'm in regular contact with off of social media, not one person on my social media friends list, people who I know in real life, but maybe I don't talk to that regularly, didn't even notice, didn't even ask where I've been. They didn't care. And the reason they didn't care is because they're too busy worrying about themselves and looking at themselves. No one is looking at you. So don't try. Don't make yourself stand out in this context stand out by not standing out stand out by going quiet stand out by working on yourself stand out by proving your ex wrong of what they thought about you that's how you stand out that's non-neediness non-neediness is not giving a fuck about what anybody thinks about you anybody non-neediness is sticking to your guns now i get called out for a lot of things 
that are saying here, a lot of people disagree with me. I don't care. I will have a discussion with them. I will do the best to I will do it to the best of my ability to back up what I'm saying with observation and evidence and just say, hey, sometimes look, this is just a theory based on what I've seen. Yeah. But I don't care if someone disagrees with me. That doesn't that doesn't affect my identity. That doesn't affect my neediness. Yeah. I will debate them. I will fight my corner. And if they call me, if they call me whatever they want to call me, all right. Your problem, my friend. I don't care. My life will go on just fine with or without you. I will not lose any sleep out over this. I don't care. I've got better things to be doing than arguing with some troll over the internet. So, always ask yourself this. Is this worth my time? Is constantly thinking about my ex and the breakup worth my time? Or... Do I reallocate my resources, my emotional resources in to leveling up, leveling up and being non-needy? And if they do come back, if they do come back, then you've got a much better chance at reconciling because you got rid of your neediness. And that is the biggest mistake you must correct right now. Even if they don't come back, who gives a fuck? You've got you back and you'll be non-needy for your future partner who will be better than your ex and you'll be better for them because the breakup came to you as an opportunity, a gift, a chance to renew. Do not waste it. It will be the single best opportunity of your life. So don't be needy. And that's all I've got for today. If you like the video, hit like and subscribe. It really helped me out. And as always, you are enough, you will be okay, and I will see you on the other side.